Hey everyone, I'm Shannon Morris with another Tech Thing short over here at youtube.com slash tech thing. I just spent my yesterday afternoon at Intel's autonomous driving day over at their San Jose campus learning about how Intel is working with technologies and different brands to make autonomous vehicles work for actual consumers. The first half of my day was spent learning about all the different technologies that are used to help with human machine interaction. Then during the second half, I got a first-hand experience being a passenger in an autonomous vehicle and TLDR, it was pretty cool. So first I learned about how Intel is using 5G connectivity to bring faster data streams to autonomous cars. Since Intel is the backbone of clouds, networks, and devices, they are being a crucial player in defining the next spectrum that we're going to be using for real-time data to and from those connected cars. I also got to try out a HoloLens demo that gave me a view of the data pouring out of a car and being transmitted via 5G spectrum to the cloud. I learned how automated cars use Intel Go automotive software development kits to teach these vehicles to drive with machine learning. Another demo explained how Delphi, which is a company working closely with Intel, used several different technologies to make an autonomous car actually be road ready to the point that they could take it across the country on a road trip. Yes, that did happen. They explained that the hardest part to figure out is how to get all that data from radar and from cameras and LiDAR and more from the car to the cloud and back because terabytes are transferred every single day. That's a ton of data. My favorite demo in the Intel Autonomous Driving Garage was how you build trust with a car. Now, I feel like this is going to be the biggest hurdle for autonomous vehicles. We as humans don't necessarily trust all of the technology that we interact with, so we need to get used to it. We need to be able to interact with a car just like we do with like Google or Echo or Siri, having some kind of notification telling us that our car is prepared to go to our destination. I feel like that's important. It's gotta work with our current devices and it's got to be easy to use or of course we're not gonna use it. It needs to feel comfortable and it has to be safe and normal just like a part of any other routine. And then the big part of the day came up. It was my scheduled ride in the autonomous vehicle. So I checked in, I made my way to the car. Part of me was a little bit nervous. My Ford Focus, it can parallel park itself, which I think is pretty cool, but I control the gas and I can take over the wheel if I want to, like if it runs away from me, which it never has done. But what happens when your car has full control? Who knows? <laughs> we were walked through where all the sensors were located on the car, and then we jumped in the back seat. In California, a trained professional has to be in the driver's seat during an autonomous vehicle test drive, so the car was rather full. Once we got on a local road, though, the car was switched into automatic mode, and then we were off. But of course, not too fast. It was going the speed limit. The car felt comfortable to ride in. It wasn't slamming on the brakes or speeding down the road. It took turns at a normal speed, and it didn't take them too sharp, so it didn't, you didn't feel like you were gonna fall out of your seat or anything. It recognized other cars on the road whenever it needed to switch lanes. At one point, a pedestrian walked across the crosswalk and it knew where the crosswalk was and it stopped for the pedestrian. And it didn't creep up close to him or anything like you see taxis do in San Francisco all the time. Yes, that really does happen. It just kind of waited till he was gone and then it went on its merry little way. It knew where the stoplights were and which ones to pay attention to, so it knew to pay attention to the closest stoplight, not the one like three stoplights down, and it saw cars crossing the road while we were sitting at the red light. Now the driver, and I say driver in quotes because she wasn't touching the wheel or the gas at all, said she totally felt comfortable in the car. It, it, was, it was fine for her. The folks that I was riding with were also very excited and they were wowed by the experience. Honestly, I don't know why I was nervous in the first place. I wasn't that nervous, but I did have a moment where I was like, what if the car doesn't see another car? What if we hit someone? What if it decides it doesn't like us and then it runs into a lamp pole? Yeah, no, it didn't do any of that. It doesn't get distracted. It doesn't have road rage. It takes a cautious approach to driving, but it's not like grandma speeds. It drove like I would. It was a pretty calm experience. I felt rather safe, like a lot safer than some of the people that I've been in cars with. Y'all know who you are. You need to start using your blinkers. Come on, it's easy. Just turn on your blinkers if you're gonna turn or change lanes. <sighs> All in all, I gotta say it was a pretty successful day. I've already gotten a toe in the water with my level one autonomous vehicle with my own car parking itself, but I've never really interacted with that much autonomy. But it was cool. It felt safe and now I kinda want my future car to drive me around. Oh, the future. It'll be a good day.
It'll be really fun. <laughs> I'm Shannon Morse. If you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe over to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash techthing. And you can tweet us at techthing if you really enjoyed this one and you want to see more techthing shorts just like this. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you next time. Bye.